So I'm going to go ahead and invite Guy in to join us. He has some wonderful things to share with you that are of the Lord from the Bible, the words of God. Uh, thanks, Dr. Susan. Hello, everyone. As I'm hearing Dr. Susan share about these amazing testimonies, miracles of healings that you know, we can't even dream about. The thought occurs to me, and I'm sure with all of us, that if that's good and well for that person who received this miracle, maybe that person really deserved it, that person was really good in his or her life, but what about me? You know, I'm not good enough. I really don't qualify. These thoughts really come in and interfere with our ability to receive what, what's free. God really wants us healed. He wants us well. He designed us with perfect balance. Dr. Susan talks a lot about brain chemistry, about excitatory neurotransmitters and inhibitory transmitters and how they're balanced. This is the design which our maker created us to be. And when they go out of whack, that's not the original design. That's not what God intends for us to have. Just want to go to the scriptures and rather than listen to this person or that person tell us, well, you know, you have to do this to be healed or do that to be healed. Let's see what God has to say because the Bible is God's word and God has the final say. So let's just look at that. It's, it's not that difficult. Let's go together into this. So first thing, let's touch on this idea that you have to be somebody special. You have to be a person that's really good or deserving of healing before you can be healed. Let's, let's look at really what happened. And there are two accounts in the, in the Bible that are really quite helpful. Uh, one is the account of the 10 lepers. It's find it in Luke 17. And in Luke, it talks about how 10 lepers went to Jesus to be healed. And Jesus cleansed them and healed them all. And he says, go present yourself to the priest and, and check yourself out. So they, they went off. But one came back. One came back to thank Jesus and express his gratitude to Jesus. And Jesus was kind of amazed. He said, hey, weren't there 10 who got healed? Where are the other nine? We don't know what happened to the other nine. We don't even know whether they were thankful to Jesus, whether they were good or deserving or whatever, but we know that only one came back. Yet Jesus healed all 10 without qualification. He didn't say, well, hey, you to ten, first get your act in order, and then I'll heal you. No, he just healed all ten. That's the will of his Father. Jesus says, I came to do the will of the one who sent me. Jesus says, I do what my Father does. I speak what my Father speaks. I do the work that my Father is doing. So we know the work of Jesus reflects what his Father's work is, which is to provide this great healing. The second account we have here in John 5, 1 is very interesting. It's a healing by the pool of Bethesda. And here's this paraplegic. He's been, I think, sick for 38 years. He's lying by the pool. And Jesus goes to him and heals him. He's able to stand. He walks. He's carrying his mat. He's really happy. If you follow the story, right at the end, Jesus meets him again. And Jesus says, hey, stop sinning in case something worse happens. This man, when Jesus found him, was a sinner. We don't know what he was doing, but it wasn't good. And he had a history of sin. But Jesus healed him without reservation. He qualified for Jesus' healing because he needed healing. Our qualification is because we need help. And the healer, which is Jesus, comes and heals. But there was sin that did not disqualify him. After receiving the miracle, seeing the goodness of God, then Jesus went to him and says, hey, don't do this anymore. It's bad for you. So we can see here from these accounts that everybody qualifies. Ten lepers, all ten. <coughs> Only one came back, yet nine were healed. This sick man by the pool of Bethesda, a paraplegic, had some kind of sin occurring in his life. No problem for Jesus. Healed. In fact, you think about it, every single person that went to Jesus were deficient in their lives in some form or matter. Nobody had their act perfectly together. Otherwise, why would they be sick in the first place? Obviously, people fall into sin, do things that are wrong, and they need deliverance. And God is the deliverer. He heals. In Matthew 4.23, it says Jesus healed all sicknesses and diseases. He didn't say some. He didn't give conditions. All. And this is really exciting because when we hear Dr. Susan share about testimony after testimony, we realize, wait a minute, that could be me. I could be the next testimony. What's there to stop me from, from receiving? It can't be my sin. It can't be my whatever it may be because I'm no different than every single person that Jesus touched and healed. Every single one of them had some kind of chronic problem and imperfection in their lives. None of them were disqualified. It's amazing. There was even this woman with this bleeding condition for many years. She spent all of her money with the doctors and she was broke and she was sick. And she said, oh, if I only touch Jesus, I'll be healed. She's the only person we find in scripture where she just touched him and she was healed. She didn't even ask for Jesus' permission to be healed. She just like presumed, I'm going to touch him, I'm going to be healed. Jesus didn't say, oh, wait a minute, you have to ask me for permission to be healed. No. He said, who touched me? He looked around and then he saw her and he said, oh, woman, your faith has healed you. And this is the type of God we have. He's a gracious God. He wants us well. He's loving. And he qualifies all of us to be healed.